What's going on YouTube? So this is my 1988 20 foot checkmate that I've been rebuilding since last summer. When I originally got the boat, it was 100% rotten. I had to redo the transom, redo the stringers, redo the flooring. Some of the core material from the top and bottom cap had to be redone also. Currently I'm stripping it back down after enjoying it all summer long. The boat did about 64 miles an hour when it was in the water. I stripped it down because this rear cap cracked right down the middle where I had originally removed it from. I removed it to fix the transom and do some stringer work. And when I molded it back together, I didn't put any core material in the bottom. I just put fabric and it cracked immediately. So I learned my lesson. I fixed it the right way. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I put the core material and how to make how to made it look like this. It's almost ready for primer, then paint. And hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, so I cut it. I cut off the the cracks that I had. My plan is to now get 1708, put it through the bottom from here to here, glass it in, and then have something supported for it's nice and even. I'm gonna get uh, some wood and make a stringer from the bottom, make glass that in, make sure it's nice and sturdy. I'm gonna flare this up, and by the end of the day, it's gonna look completely different. I came back here and I cut down all the cracks. So my putty has something to grab onto. Looks horrible now, but I promise you by the end of the day, it's gonna be a lot prettier. This side is not that bad, but it's gonna be the same process as the other side. All right guys, so I cut these woods out. I'm gonna use them as core. I cut four of them out. My plan is to do the inside, run it this like this, this one like that, this one like that, and then do the inside. I'm gonna screw them in, and I'm gonna secure them with polyfill. Let it dry, hopefully it dries within the hour. And then I'm gonna glass it. Take this. I'm gonna take the screws out, glass it, and start the flaring process. Here's a pro tip: screw on the screws before you start doing the work. It makes everything a lot easier. So this is polyester putty I used to glue on my core material. I used the screws only to hold it into place. Next day I came back once it was all dry and I took off the screws. All right, well this is what we got so far. Glassed in. I'm gonna take out the screws now, grind this down evenly, then put some more layers of fabric. Same for this side. I'm gonna take the screws out grind this down and then we can start flaring Alright, so now I gotta wait till tomorrow until all this is dry so I can sand it down with 220 and hopefully I don't have to go through it a lot. Oh, I missed a spot here. Oh, shit. Oh, 
pretty much did everything. I just need everything to dry to see if I have to hit it again. But little by little, a lot of progress was made today. All right, guys, so it's the next day. And I started working without filming. Well, I sanded it down my 80 grit on the rotary sander. And this is the first pass, pretty much. I'm gonna have, probably have to do like two more. The back came out decent, all the cracks are filled in. I still gotta sand this down, but I need to do this by hand. These corners are gonna be a mission, but whatever. That came out nice, all nice and smooth. Still needs like another two coats. So for my second pass, I'm gonna use this body filler right here from 3M. It's what I use all the time, I love it. This dries up super quick. In a matter of 15 minutes, it's dry and ready for sanding. Other than the putty fill, the putty fill takes about a day to completely dry and be able to sand. So that's why I'm choosing. I usually do this first, and then I'll use that body filler. All right guys, so it's ready for sanding. I'm gonna use some 80 grit sandpaper that has been lightly used. I'm just gonna scuff up and take off all these big spots and then I'm gonna hit it with 220. So. This is why I love this stuff. It is super smooth, sounding down nice and low, and it doesn't scratch off. Look at that, beautiful. Couldn't be happier. I fix all this. Remember the crack that was there? It's not there anymore. All this stuff was cracked, it's not there. Remember this ugly crack? Fixed it. It still needs more work. I still need to sand this. I still need to fill this up a little bit here in the corners, touch that up. But it's looking good. This side, it's all smooth. All right, guys. So it's the end of the day, and the side of the boat's ready for some high build primer. I'm gonna do that sometime this week. The rear of the boat needs to be sanded down a little bit more, but. It's looking a lot better than what it did a few days ago. There's no more cracks anywhere. I fixed all the stress cracks. She's looking good. I decided to rip out the carpet because I had some defects. And since the carpet's out, I'm, I'm gonna pour foam into the empty cavities under the floor and get everything ready for spring break. All I need to do is paint and put my accessories back on. For, I have my engine in pieces, but it should be pretty quick. I had to take the power head off because the upper motor mount housing was cracked and my motor mounts were wiggling back and forth. But this is my 250 EFI power head that I'm cleaning the injectors. I'm installing some Chris Carson reeds, changing the fuel pump, changing the, the fuel regulator and just servicing everything I can. She was, she did about 50, 300 RPMs at 64 miles an hour. I know these engines should rev up to at least 58. So I'm hoping with the jack play and the bigger setback, she should be in the 70s. So that's the plan for the next few weeks. If you like these videos, make sure to subscribe. If you have any insight or you have any comments, drop it down below. And thanks guys, subscribe. Say bye sailor.